Welcome to STEM Careers with Newton's Road for 6th to 12th grade students. Each week we will be joined by experts from organizations to help you explore STEM-related careers in our region. My name is Barb Tremont. I'm the Executive Director of Newton's Road, a regional nonprofit supporting STEM learning and career exploration. I also have with me today our Michigan Tech University intern, Annalisa Wiesner. Hi. And our special guest today, Dan Goodchild returns, and this time he's here to talk with us about careers in heating, ventilation, cooling, and refrigeration, HVAC-R. Welcome, Dan. Hi, thanks for having me back again. Great to have you. This session will be recorded and available on our Newton's Road Facebook Live and YouTube channels. If you are joining us from Facebook Live right now, please ask questions for Dan or Newton's Road in the comment area. Before we get back to Dan, we're going to learn a little bit more about Newton's Road. And Annalise is going to share our website. In 2020, we are celebrating 10 years of working to ensure that all youth in our five county region have access to quality STEM learning and career exploration opportunities and to help you become great problem solvers. So as we scroll down our website, you'll see our mailing list and this way, um, you will get all the uh, notices around our and other um, people that are supporting STEM learning and career education around our region. So this monthly newsletter um, will come out about mid-month every month. And also we wanted to show you our calendar where you can see future events um, for the STEM at home and STEM careers and other um, events that we and others are having and all of the information um, and around STEM careers programming, like what we're doing today, can be found on the STEM at Home page. And lastly, oh, here we go, yes. And you hear all those recordings right there in today's episodes, we'll join it shortly. And then lastly, we're going to go to the ex uh, career exploration area and here we have a collection of various resources, some of them used in schools, some of them for specialized careers, um, such as Going Pro, where we mm -hmm. might find um, information about today's career. So back to you, Dan, and learning all about HVAC. Thank you. All right, thank you. Yeah, so um, one of the things that uh, I have to kind of highlight too is when uh, first getting into the construction trades, I'm an electrician by trade, um, was when I had that life-changing event, which really has worked through uh, everything I've come across in the future. But it was that first time I had a real difficult time doing an electrical uh, run in a timber frame house, uh, but working with a veteran uh, timber framer um, he just uh, showed me how, you know, while we face a lot of uh, difficulties and challenges, uh, not only on the job, but in life, these are actually opportunities for us to uh, excel, to adapt and to overcome. So that's just kind of something that I've uh, lived by uh, ever since I was a young electrician. And um, I've been passing that on to, uh, you know, our students and stuff through that go through all of our uh, various programs at NMC. So we'll talk about HVACR today. Um, for the most part, uh, when someone's referred to as a HVACR technician, they just call them an HVAC tech. Uh, the R is left off pretty commonly. But uh, yeah, as you pointed out there, Barb, that stands for heating, ventilation, air conditioning, and refrigeration. So they have a very broad area of uh, expertise and knowledge and, and areas to work in. Uh, so some of the things that you do as an HVAC tech uh, is you're pretty much everybody's familiar with the residential air conditioners outside their homes. That's where a lot of them start. They work with the, either the forced air furnaces or those air conditioners uh, on a home. Uh, some may then move on into some of the bigger box store commercial sized units. Um, those are usually referred to as rooftop units because they're on top of the roof of the building. And those uh, can be anywhere from the size of a regular household unit 
uh, to, for example, at the college, we have one that's big enough where like three or four people can actually walk inside of it and do the maintenance in there. So uh, the size of these component or units that provide our heating and cooling um, are, are very different uh, and go uh, to some pretty incredible sizes. Um, they'll also be testing um, and, and uh, working on them. So there's uh, also a background of electrical uh, along with an HVAC tech. Um, then they also have to understand airflow. Um, a lot of times they have to understand uh, water flow uh, and then also how gases are compressed and condensed and, and uh, used in uh, creating our heat or cooling our air. Um, and then of course, there's a lot of record keeping involved. Uh, while a lot of the work can be done outside and a lot of it is hands-on, there's always that uh, record keeping uh, so that should you ever go back to a, the same place again, you know what has already been done. Uh, next slide, please. So uh, how, you, how do you know if this might be a good job for you? Well, like almost all the uh, careers in construction, if you like working with your hands, if you like solving problems, uh, working outdoors, and then also uh, if you tend to be a person who likes to work more independently, um, kind of think for yourself, or if you uh, want to start your own business, that, that's, a, that's a great job. Um, a lot of career opportunities, uh, everything from installers and technicians to um, maybe being someone who actually works for one of the product distribution companies and, and you can kind of be more specialized in uh, certain types of equipment and maybe want to be a distributor. Um, and then of course, everything from working on residential to commercial to industrial type of equipment. Next slide, please. Uh, so this is a picture of the front of our uh, Construction Skills Development Center. It's at the Aero Park Laboratories building on the um, Aero Park campus of NMC. Uh, it's about a 25,000 square foot building. Uh, most of that is dedicated to lab space. Um, we are uh, pretty proud about the fact that we, uh, while we can offer some of our academic part of our class online, we still have students coming in to actually do the hands-on labs. So our lab is equipped with um, regular forced air furnaces, uh, air conditioners. Um, then we have uh, various types of ice machines, uh, a walk-in cooler, freezer, um, and even a uh, soft serve ice cream machine, some things that you may run into uh, uh, every day out there, especially in this area where we have a lot of uh, food service industry. Um, so also with uh, all of our construction uh, programs here, we have uh, experts in the field actually come in and teach for us. So they're working full time during the day and they serve as what we call an adjunct instructor uh, to come in and teach students at, at night uh, when most of our classes are held. Uh, so they're not having somebody uh, teach who's just book smart, they got somebody who actually can show them uh, what they've done during the day and, and give them some actual field experience uh, in the HVAC industry. Next slide, please. So uh, again, another field that is really in uh, large demand uh, and also pays very well. Uh, I remember back in the uh, Oh, early 2000s there when we had that large uh, housing crash, basically a lot of the construction industry just um, pretty much folded up. And uh, if they didn't leave the area altogether, they were really hurting for work. HVAC was the only uh, trade that I was still getting calls for uh, looking for help because they were still servicing people's boilers and um, air conditioners and uh, heating. And so uh, there's just some things that people have to absolutely have and they're going to pay for it. And uh, because it's just one of those necessities. So um, yeah, again, a lot of uh, demand for uh, this uh, 
career field and, and it, that continues. Next slide, please. All right, so uh, when you, if you decide this is something you might wanna look into, of course, um, you start with applying to NMC and then letting uh, them know that you are interested in the HVAC uh, construction technology program. Uh, I am the sole advisor uh, right now for everyone coming into all of our construction programs. And then we can talk about, you know, exactly what kind of um, education you're looking at getting. Our HVAC certificate level one covers six courses that will take a student from the introduction to HVAC, what it's all about, all the way through um, the what, what's uh, called the EPA certification, which is basically to give a person their universal certificate for servicing uh, refrigerants, um, being able to take care of air conditioners and stuff like that. that. That certificate can be completed in about three to four semesters, depending on the pace the student wants to take. Uh, we do have a renewable energy HVAC certificate. The primary focus in there is to look at uh, geothermal technology. Um, that's most commonly used in the northern climates. Um, there is a solar thermal technology. Uh, it's basically heating up water as it passes through uh, a, a tube. And this is mounted on your roof or on the side of a, a building wall. Typically and very commonly used down in the southern climates, the equatorial area. And then we also have a HVAC associates degree. This is basically our certificate with some of the renewable energy added in and then um, the standard gen education, general education requirements um, uh, like English, math, uh, humanities, stuff like that. Um, the certificate and even the uh, associate's degree can also be rolled into a construction management degree. This would be for someone who was really thinking about wanting to start their own business. Um, that course uh, provides them then the additional classes to get them familiar with managing, um, marketing, and cost estimating. And those are kind of the highlights of that uh, construction management degree. Next slide, please. Dan, I noticed you had a picture of a young woman there doing the program. Yeah. Do you have uh, many women in your programs? Yeah, actually, in all of our programs, we've been seeing more and more um, young ladies and, and women coming in. Um, and we've had several graduate. Uh, some have gone off. Uh, for example, there, a young lady went off to uh, in Windermuller. She's now supervising um, two or three job sites at a time. Uh, same with a gal who graduated uh, from our carpentry program. She is now the head of the trim carpentry department for uh, Bay Area Construction here in town. Um, as far as the HVAC goes, uh, we have a couple ladies going through uh, and they're still pretty much uh, out in the intra, you know, kind of in the uh, laborer side of work in the HVAC industry right now. They are, they're not uh, actually running their own businesses or anything yet, but they're, they're out there working, so. Great to hear, thanks. Yeah. Um, so looking uh, at, you know, the geothermal and solar thermal uh, parts of this uh, career field, in the um, listings for these through the Bureau of Labor and Statistics, they basically have them exactly the same as an HVAC tech. So, uh, and, and that's what I've found is there's really not a specific uh, niche for these. It's, it's HVAC technicians that are just have learned this technology and they're using it as part of their daily uh, routine. So um, pretty much whoever you hire on with it, they may very well have a geothermal, uh, especially up in this area, may have a geothermal uh, part of their um, company to, to handle that. So there's really no additional information as far as do they get paid more or less. It's just a different type of technology. Uh, next slide, please. So our uh, lab, um, we like I said, typically each class meets one night a week. 
Um, this photo shows one small section of the whole lab area. That is the walk-in cooler and freezer, which students, uh, as they progress along, they'll get involved in um, how that actually operates. Um, we also have several trainers there that uh, have kind of a cutaway view that actually show how a, an air conditioner or um, uh, heating system works through the compression in, of gases. Uh, so it's pretty, pretty cool. Um, as with all of our construction programs here, we do have scholarships available. And uh, so there's an individual one through the Home Builders Association of Grand Traverse, as well as the Builders Exchange. And then through the uh, College Foundation, we have several uh, scholarships available, and those range from you know, $500 to over $1,000. Um, and that's the same with the HBA and Builders Exchange. Those scholarships are typically in the area of you know, $1,000 to $2,000. Uh, one other thing that um, we have found is many contractors out there, if you come and start these classes, and hire on with them, they may actually offer to pay for part, if not all of your tuition. So um, a lot of times some of these scholarships are, you know, they're, they're really going to the people who need them. Uh, and then, you know, we have a lot of our uh, contractors, supporters who are just out there happy to get uh, someone who really wants to learn the trade. And so they pay for their schooling. So it's a really great opportunity. Next slide, please. Uh, so coming up in October, um, we're actually still kind of waiting to hear that um, we will have permission to run this this year under uh, COVID um, uh, parameters and, and working with the spacing and stuff. But this, this is a two-day career exploration event. And HVAC is one of the areas that the students get to come through and actually have a chance to do a little um, copper soldering. Um, one thing I, that I, I would mention about our HVAC program too that I didn't earlier is we've incorporated some plumbing skills in with the HVAC program. Um, we found many companies are not only doing all the heating, ventilation, air conditioning, but they're also doing plumbing. Mm -hmm. uh, so having those skills as well um, really rounds you out as a, a full-blown HVAC tech. And uh, so when the kids come through on this uh, two-day event, um, and we, we pretty much target eighth to 10th graders, although we've had uh, some 11th and 12th graders come through, uh, they'll get to go through and try carpentry, welding. Uh, we have Elmers come out with some mini excavators, um, some HVAC, and then also this year, we're gonna have a couple places where they can check out some automotive skills. So this is a, a really great, fun event. Um, and I believe the HBA has some footage of uh, several of our past events uh, here with students going through. Where would they find out about it if it's going to run? Well, so what we're going to be doing as soon as we find that we have gotten the um, permission to run this, uh, we'll actually be sending out notifications to all the uh, schools in the area. And then HBA advertises it for us because uh, one of the uh, uh, employees there, she has a good connection with the homeschooling uh, system. And um, basically and then through Builder Exchange, everybody that I, I work closely with uh, every day, we all blast this out pretty heavily. So, and then um, the connections to it go through our, um, uh, it's B. Kitty Malone. She's our office manager for our whole tech division, and she gets everybody plugged in. Well, we'd be happy to put it on our calendar and our newsletter for you. Oh, great. Thank you. <laughs> All right. And next slide. So the other uh, avenue for folks that is, it's, this is still growing. Uh, right now we're in the marketing stage of this is the Build Your Life initiative. Um, right now, uh, we're looking at having a broadcast through radio and social media beginning uh, late September, early October, uh, to just bring awareness to the need of people to get into the construction trades. 
Um, not only that, but what a great opportunity uh, it is to uh, add these kind of professional skills uh, and be able to do things, uh, not only for others, but even for yourself. If you just decide, you know, maybe I don't want to do this for a living, but gosh, I can uh, have these skills to do something on my own house or something. So um, what this, the overall pro, uh, program is going to look like is Build Your Life will give you the way to get into the trades, and then it'll show you uh, the whole path of where you can go to get educated, who's looking to take you on as uh, an intern or an apprentice, and then ultimately this is where you'll end up working. So basically a whole life cycle of um, getting into the, into the trades and, and having it laid right out for you. Um, yeah, so, and we have a lot of partners in that right now and uh, we're just gonna keep on plugging away with it. Great, thank you. So say I'm a student and I'm interested in this program and I'm in high school, I'm gonna graduate soon, but maybe I still have a couple years left of high school. Can I dual enroll at MMC? Are there any classes I can take to kind of get ahead? You know, the, I don't think we have yet had a, a, well, maybe one. Yeah, I think there has been one dual enrolled student coming in, and I think they were for the electrical. This was a, it's probably been a year or two ago. Um, but a, actually, you know, most uh, students, you know, we don't, for HVAC, I think it would be great if we could probably open up a dual enrollment for that, because um, there is no, uh, Career Tech Center that really has an HVAC program. And that's one mm -hmm. thing that we're really kind of struggling with in getting a, a lot of HVAC technicians uh, brought up because most of them are, are students who have a father or uncle or somebody that they know is in there. And so then they've, they've gotten into it. So um, currently, I, I think there is a possibility of doing that, but we don't have any right now. Okay, cool. So there's a possibility you could check with your school. Yeah. Um, another thing that we're finding when we talk to young people is that they say, I want to know how I can, I want to make a difference. And I want to know how I can make a difference in the careers that I'm exploring. Can you talk a little bit about how, how might a student make a difference as an HVAC technician? I think, um, some of the greatest ways, especially in, you know, in any of these construction fields, but uh, you know, speaking particularly about uh, HVAC, uh, Habitat for Humanity does a lot of work and they're always looking for volunteers to help them do these homes for people. And they're always struggling to find um, you know, enough help in all these different trades to do that work. And, and that, I mean, you wanna talk about making a difference. You, you're giving somebody a home and, uh, and, and they need people in construction to help them do this. So uh, that's probably number one right up front that would be the most immediate big impact difference a, a person in this area can make. Well, I can think of also, they do the homes for veterans, um, you know, and yeah. other people that need extra support. And even just recently um, the, wall unit that cools and heats my bedroom started leaking all over the place and I had to call my local HVAC person to stop my bedroom from getting flooded. So right, right. <laughs> that was really helpful and it made a huge difference to me that it didn't ruin all our furniture and all of that. So there's, you know, yeah. um, there's also just the kind of the basics and that's probably why it was in so high demand through um, economic up and down. So yeah, yeah. Times. Yeah, because, um, you know, you so, think about all the restaurants and everything in the area, too, uh, and they have all this equipment and, you know, without it working, mm -hmm. they're in big trouble. Mm -hmm. You know, so I was thinking that brings up another point, which is that things like this happen, accidents happen. Does an HVAC technician need to be on call? What are the, what are the hours like? Yeah, so in fact, uh, across the street uh, from my house, I have a guy who works uh, for an HVAC company, and every couple weekends or so, he's on call, and uh, you know, and, and that's 
that's really a, a fact of life and, and a necessity because you never know when your air conditioner is going to go out or your furnace is going to go out. Mm -hmm. And uh, yeah, it's good to know that those guys are out there, those folks, and and uh, you call the right company. Um, typically, it's the bigger ones. They have the every weekend and, and at night on call. Uh, they'll be there. So this job would be good for somebody who they would expect to maybe be on call a couple days a week, would you say? That, well, you know, again, if it's with a bigger company, there may be like, uh, they may be one week every couple months they're on call, um, something like that. Mm -hmm. But uh, yeah, you'd probably be wanting to be somebody who doesn't mind, uh, you know, occasionally having those flexible hours, getting up at 3 a.m. and having to run in and take care of something. And you're paid for those times in addition to your um, regular yeah, pay usually. Mm -hmm. Yeah, typically when you go on call, um, the whole time that you're on call is, is paid time. Now, when we have like a big storm come through, um, are the backup systems also like people have trouble with those working and or getting them started? Is that also HVAC um, tech that would support that? Well, you're probably gonna have a combination of uh, things in that time because you'll probably have electricians involved, uh, mm -hmm. especially if power goes out. Um, because if a, a lot of refrigerate, most of refrigeration equipment runs off of electricity. So if, if it's one of those situations where a storm goes through, trees are knocked down, power lines go down, that's yeah, most likely going to be your um, utility workers out there doing fixing the electrical. Uh, typically, storms don't really take out HVAC equipment other than the electric side of it. Um, they may be called out just to make sure that it does, you know, once re electricity is restored, that it is operating normally and something else mm -hmm. didn't get um, burned up. Mm -hmm. I was thinking of generators. I finally remembered what it's oh, called. Oh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, most generators, uh, well, that those are pretty much fed by some kind of utility. So it may be like consumers or DTE, somebody like that who ends up checking those. Okay. So Dan, right. I'm going to school for mechanical engineering. And I know that mechanical engineers also work in HVAC and they may, might design the systems, et cetera. If, if there was someone who wanted to be an HVAC engineer and be the one designing those systems, I imagine it would be a good idea if they maybe were a technician first and knew how, exactly how those systems work. Do you agree? Could could someone go from becoming a, start with becoming an HVAC technician and eventually become an engineer? Yeah, well, the route like a lot of engineers take is they start with their associate's program, move into a bachelor's program. And then from there, um, you know, they may go on to a master's or just, just see how far they can go with their uh, bachelor's in mechanical engineering. Um, so, you know, I, I've seen it go, I guess, you know, either way, a lot of students, they will like get their initial certificate and maybe three, four years experience. And if they're in, inclined to like go back to school because they're, they're just really into that, um, they may end up for a lot of them will go to Ferris, uh, Ferris State. Uh, that's where a lot of the, there's a really big and very robust uh, HVAC program down there to get them through their bachelor's program. So, um, but typically, you know, what I see is when someone, their goal is an engineering degree, that's what they're going to be in school for until they get it. And then they'll go work or, or they may be working at the same time. Mm -hmm. And is the military another place where you could learn the skills um, or would they, or would it be mostly if, after you return and do something like NMC program? Yeah, actually uh, I've had a, uh, probably over the past couple of years, a lot of veterans coming in and they actually were HVAC techs uh, in the military. 
And actually one of my instructors was himself uh, an HVAC tech in the military and, and ran, you know, the, the HVAC system for the whole base. So yeah, and, and when they come in, I'm finding uh, that most of the experience they've had there can be completely um, transferred over. So what they then do is get this competency for credit. So rather than uh, full price for each class, it's like 120 bucks or something, so. Mm. Okay, that's great to know. Yeah. Well, I think that we're up on time. Thank you so much, Dan. It was wonderful to have you here again. And I want to um, thank all of our sponsors and supporters um, that you see here that this programming would not be available without their support. So thank you to all of you. And this actual program ends our uh, STEM careers uh, summer session, um, but we are planning some programs in the fall and you can find out about them on newtonsroad.org listed here or on our social media with Facebook uh, and um, Instagram, um, or if you sign up for that newsletter that we showed you earlier. So we hope to see you going forward and until then, um, happy career hunting. <laughs> mm -hmm.